Welcome to NTR Nightly. I am Janelle Norville. This edition stop stories. Cabinet announces the resumption of several social and economic activities. St. Lucia receives a donation of ventilators to treat COVID-19. And bidding farewell to Taiwan's ambassador to St. Lucia in a special way. As the island reopens its economy, a sense of normalcy is returning to the lives of nationals. The Cabinet of Ministers, based on the advice of the Chief Medical Officer, has agreed to the resumption of several social and economic activities under COVID-19 protocols. Effective Friday, July 10, 2020, cinemas will reopen. Early childhood development centers are to open, tournaments, sporting events and contact sports with protocols for spectators are being allowed. The yachting sector will reopen with strict protocols. The cabinet has also decided to lift the curfew. And the decision by cabinet follows the revision of the travel protocols for St. Lucia, effective Thursday 9th July 2020. Travelers will be required to obtain a negative PCR test within seven days of travel unless they are arriving from countries in a travel bubble designated by the government of St. Lucia. That travel bubble consists of countries in the Caribbean that have zero or low instance of COVID-19 cases. Travelers from those countries will be exempt from the seven-day pre-testing requirement. All arriving passengers will be screened, including temperature checks at the airport. Beginning Thursday, 9th July, international flights will be arriving at the Hiranora International Airport. Officials have been preparing the airport for the new order of business. Honorable Dominic Fede is the tourism minister. Uh, we were able to use the tents procured by Events St. Lucia for that purpose, and it is now installed at the Hiranora International Airport um, for the screening of travelers coming to our country as part of the preparation. But it also meant that the airport would have had to have been equipped with a lot of the equipment to be able to do the screening. Um, I'm happy to report that significant progress have been made in that regard. Um, the various walkthroughs, the various logistical um, uh, walkthroughs that have taken place have put us in very good stead in the preparation of our airports. Training have been done uh, with a lot of the hotel staff. We're up to um, hundreds. Um, we've uh, also been training our taxi drivers, customs and immigration officials, um, uh, officials from SLASPA, uh, also employees of the water-based uh, tourism uh, sector, uh, all in an effort to ensure that in every level of the tourism value chain, that we ensure that there's safety. Chief Medical Officer Dr. Sharon Belmar George explains how the protocols will be observed. We are going to ensure that every person who comes off a flight goes through this facility and then you, until they get, they will leave with a card of clearance, public health clearance, before they can even get into our actual airport. So everybody coming in will be fully screened um, those who need to be tested, persons who are symptomatic, we'll also be doing the test um, in there. Mm -hmm. We'll ensure that before you step into the main airport, you have gone through the, the public health facility and that you are cleared. So everyone will be assessed before they even get to customs, immigration, and the, the rest of the, the workers on the ports. A key part of St. Lucia's responsible reopening is the COVID-19 compliance certification process for the accommodation sector. To date, hotels that have received the COVID-19 certification include Bay Gardens Beach Resort and Spa, Sanders Grand St. Lucian, Stonefield Resort Villas, and Sugar Beach a Viceroy Resort. Several other hotels and resorts are on track to receive certification in July. Prime Minister the Honourable Alan Chastney says the aim is to keep both visitors and hotel workers safe. The ministry and the hotels have been working on very strict guidelines and protocols to protect the staff um, in terms of taking showers on properties, leaving their clothes on properties, their shoes on properties, that the properties will provide um, dedicated 
um, bus transportation for them, so they will not be required to go onto the public buses. Um, they will be constantly um, having their temperature tested, and they will have the proper PPPs, PPEs in place while they're at work. Similarly, um, the hotel guest, when they're in public spaces with, with persons, will be required to wear their mask, um, but certainly in their rooms and when they're on the beach, that will not be a requirement from what my understanding is. Um, but each of the hotels have developed specific protocols that have been approved by the Ministry of Health during that operation. Visitors can stay only at hotels that are COVID-19 certified. Amongst the required protocols, accommodations must sanitize luggage upon check-in, maintain a fully equipped nurse's station, observe strict detailed sanitization protocols for housekeeping, maintain required distance with tables for dining, and have hand sanitizer stations installed throughout the property. Sanitizing stations and showers for staff must also be installed for use prior to re-entering the public. St. Lucia has taken a great leap forward in the fight against COVID-19 following the donation of ventilators to treat COVID-19 patients. More in this report from Funnel Neptune. The Ministry of Health and Wellness recently received the generous donation of ventilators from English businessman Roger Myers. The donation of ventilators is expected to provide St. Lucia with the flexibility in treating patients affected by COVID-19. Roger Myers applauded the government of St. Lucia for the work undertaken to battle COVID-19 on island and says he is pleased to play a significant part in this effort. We purchased these units from um, a company called Avante in Kentucky and I've never tried to buy anything before that everybody else in the world was trying to buy <laughs> and it was so difficult because I purchased 11 and uh, the people uh, at Avanti donated a, a further unit, um, a portable one that may be I suppose useful in emergencies. I think it's about the, the 12 doubles the capacity on the island, I'm not sure about that but that's what I've been told. And I, my real prayer is that this is a complete waste of money and that they never need it. Minister for Health, Senator the Honorable Mary Isaac, commended Roger Myers on his efforts to provide such valuable contribution towards St. Lucia's response to COVID-19. It is quite a sacrifice and it is an immense gift to us, the people of St. Lucia that Mr. Myers is making here this morning. And of course, you see, he even got a little emotional saying that he hoped that we never have to use these machines. These machines cost, when you're looking at the shipping as well, in excess of 25,000, is it US dollars? US dollars. And we are getting 30, 12 of these machines. Consultant anesthesiologist, Dr. Becky John Baptiste, expressed heartfelt gratitude for the ventilators and says it will go a long way in saving the lives of patients. I would like to thank Mr. Roger Myers on behalf of the Department of Anesthesia and Intensive Care for this gallant and timely gesture. As we all know from the plethora of reports and news articles, mechanical ventilators are an integral component in the management of patients with acute respiratory distress syndrome from severe COVID-19 disease. While we pray that no citizen will be diagnosed with this condition, these ventilators will now be added to our arsenal as COVID-19 remains a threat to us all. Thank you very much. The Ministry of Health will receive a total of 12 ventilators to be utilized in the intensive care units. Reporting from the Communications Unit of the Ministry of Health and Wellness, I am Fennel Neptune. The St. Lucia Fire Service has received a shot in the arm with the donation of much-needed fire appliances. The trucks were donated by Firefighters Without Borders Canada to the St. Lucia Fire Service. FWB is a registered charitable organization based in Toronto and recently donated to the St. Lucia Fire Service personal protective equipment, including bunker gear, helmets, visors, gloves, self-contained breathing apparatus, and personal alert safety systems. 
St. Lucia Fire Services Chief Fire Officer Joseph Joseph indicated that the equipment received will go a long way in assisting the fire service in carrying out its duties. He added that one of the trucks has already been put into use. The Chief Fire Officer expressed gratitude to all who played a part in making the donation possible, especially the Firefighters Without Borders, who continues to lend immense support to the St. Lucia Fire Service. I'm also pleased to note that with the kind assistance of Firefighters Without Borders, preparations have commenced for the establishment of a training facility in the south of the island. The proposed structure will be constructed out of steel shipping containers appropriately modified to allow for fire suppression training. We are thankful to the management of Invest St. Lucia and the St. Lucia Air and Seaports Authority, SLASCO, for the kind assistance in approving a site for this structure. It is indisputable that the partnership which the St. Lucia Fire Service shares with FWB is definitely a blessing to our members and by extension the people of St. Lucia. Many people have come together to make this happen. Council General Cheryl Francis worked closely with the team at Firefighters Without Borders to facilitate the transfer of the vehicles to St. Lucia. Metro Logistics Inc. sponsored the shipment of one of the vehicles, while KLC Shipping, an entity owned by a St. Lucian entrepreneur and Goodwill Ambassador Ken Chitoli, facilitated the shipping of the other along with the Department of External Affairs. Minister for Home Affairs, Justice and National Security, Honorable Herman Gil Francis, explained that with limited resources and the ongoing war against COVID-19, the donation could not have been more timely. He also expressed gratitude to the St. Lucia Fire Service for its continued dedication. In the face of all these challenges, our fire service must go on. And so with some of our appliances coming on in age and obviously necessitates timely replacements, we welcome Firefighters Without Borders donation of these brand new appliances evermore. To all our firefighters island-wide, I thank you also for your dedication at this challenging time. I know you have had to come face to face with dealing the pandemic very courageously. You have had to learn all you can about COVID-19 and flattening the curve overnight. Take precautions and adopt new protocols. You have managed to do this almost seamlessly and without any interruptions to service. This is key, and I want to say hats off to you. Please keep it up and continue to make us proud. Minister with Responsibility for External Affairs, Honorable Sarah Flood Bobre, attended a March 7th independence event in Toronto where she was able to personally thank the team from Firefighters Without Borders for their generosity. The minister explained that the government of St. Lucia continues to be a valued ally. We are now in discussions with the government of Canada to see how we can continue to help and support us. And there are many other initiatives that Canada has continued to help St. Lucia with. So I just want to take this opportunity to renew um, the friendship and to say how very grateful St. Lucia is in these uncertain times and in these times of uh, hardship for all countries that we continue to benefit from the generosity of our friends. The Consul General highlighted the work of Frank Lamy and Craig Dockery, President and Vice President of FWB, as well as former President Ross Chalmers, as being critical to the support that St. Lucia has received thus far from the group. Firefighters Without Borders and the St. Lucia Fire Service are currently working on a series of initiatives, including the development of a training facility. Vice President of FWB, Craig Dockery, expressed gratitude to everyone who played their part. The partnership we have with the St. Lucia Fire Service goes back several years now, having conducted a two training projects together. Uh, we are thrilled to have been able to help donate the two fire trucks down there, and we, very, we hope uh, that they will help the firefighters in St. Lucia protect all St. Lucians in the future. I would like to thank a few people before I leave here. Uh, Russ Chalmers, our past president who initiated this project. Also would like to thank the Mississauga Fire and Emergency Services, who donated the truck to us. Mr. Ken Chitoli, who helped ship the pumper truck. 
a Metro Logistics who paid for the entire ladder truck shipment and shipped it down. Mrs. Cheryl Francis, the Consular General, for her full support. And of course, Fire Chief Joseph and his team for his leadership and hard work in helping us. The Department of External Affairs on Friday, 3rd July 2020, officially handed over two fire trucks recently shipped from Canada to the St. Lucia Fire Service. From the Government Information Service, I am Janelle Norville. The Ambassador of the Republic of China, Taiwan, will soon bid farewell to St. Lucia. In appreciation for his service to St. Lucia, a special ceremony was held at Government House to honor His Excellency Douglas Shen. Anisia Antoine was in attendance. The Government of St. Lucia held an investiture ceremony to honor outgoing Ambassador of the Republic of China, Taiwan, His Excellency Douglas Shen, with the St. Lucia Medal of Honor Gold. His Excellency Douglas Shen presented his letters of credence to the Governor-General of St. Lucia on March 22, 2017. During his tenure, the Ambassador facilitated many valuable projects that contributed significantly to the national development of St. Lucia and enhanced the livelihood of St. Lucians. The Minister for External Affairs, Honorable Sarah Flood Barbara, affirmed the deep-rooted diplomatic relations and bilateral cooperation between St. Lucia and the Republic of China, Taiwan, and hailed the efforts of Ambassador Shen during his tenure. Your diplomacy has been characterized by an intense diplomacy. I would describe it as that, intense, strategic, quiet and effective. You have represented the people of your country very well here and you've represented the interest of St. Lucia, not just here but even in your own country while you've been here. And so that is why it's very easy for me to say that this ceremony here confers this medal upon you, a medal that you've already earned. Prime Minister of St. Lucia, Honorable Alan Chastney, expressed gratitude to His Excellency Douglas Shen for his efforts in deepening the relations between St. Lucia and Taiwan to also include the private sector. Under your stewardship, Ambassador, the state of relations between Taiwan and St. Lucia has reached new heights in terms of productivity. No longer is it strictly between our two governments. It has now been broadened to include ties with our private sectors as well. It is mainly through your persistent efforts that St. Lucia has been able to access loan funding from Taiwan, Import Export Bank to finance the reconstruction of the Hunora International Airport. The outgoing ambassador of the Republic of China, Taiwan, His Excellency Douglas Shen, stated that it was a privilege to have served the people of St. Lucia and expressed his gratitude to the government of St. Lucia for the honor bestowed upon him. I received the Medal of Honor with appreciation and the humility. For it is not only a recognition of my service here, but also a symbol of the everlasting and the ever stronger bond between Taiwan and St. Lucia. <laughs> and I believe the existing partnership between our two countries will only grow and prosper in the future. Shakespeare once wrote, we are such staff a stream are made of. My three years of tenure in St. Lucia have been a fantastic dream. Here I have met so many wonderful friends, as you good sir, and together we have achieved so much. My wife and I also enjoy the beautiful scenery and the lovely people on this par paradise island. And I am very grateful that I have the opportunity to contribute something to St. Lucia. 
The investiture ceremony took place on Tuesday, July 7, 2020 at Government House. From the Government Information Service, I am Anisia Antoine reporting. And this is NTN Nightly. Up next, Primus Hutchinson with the NTN Nouvelle of the York. COVID-19 is a new pandemic disease as declared by the World Health Organization. It is transmitted directly by respiratory droplets when an infected person coughs or sneezes or indirectly through rubbing the face with contaminated hands. There is still no specific treatment or vaccine against COVID-19 and as such, the farming community should adhere to some special recommendations. Reduce your farm labor to only essential workers. Ensure regular hand washing with soap and water or use 60% to 95% alcohol-based hand sanitizer until soap and water are available. Clean all work surfaces and farm tools such as cutlasses, forks and sprayers with a 10% bleach solution. Ensure that toilets are cleaned thoroughly after each use and sanitized daily. Prohibit visitors to the farms. Limit contact among farm workers and promote social distances, ensuring six feet between each worker. And promote a no handshaking or unnecessary touch policy. More than ever before, your important role as the gatekeepers of St. Lucia's nutritional health and food security should be taken seriously. When you exercise these precautions, you not only safeguard your health, but also continue to allow all St. Lucians access to freshly grown fruits, vegetables, and other local crops. Remember, it is our responsibility to ensure our nation eats fresh, St. Lucia's best. Welcome back. We join Primus Hutchinson for the NTN Nouvelle au Creole. Monsieur Tain Genel, Monsieur Madame Department, qui est une responsabilité pour les formations en gouvernement, c'est le GIS et NTN, qui est une nouvelle en Creole. Président Primus Hutchinson. En célébration de la CARICOM, la marche siati de Treaty of Chagaramas pour établir la commune Caraïbe, le 4 juillet 1973, le gouvernement s'est laissé établir la journée de la CARICOM, une initiative pour avoir une organisation plus visible et pour travailler qui est au café. Une cérémonie pour célébrer la journée de la CARICOM en la voie d'établissement du gouvernement lundi bon matin. En parmi les officiers qui étaient présents, c'était l'ambassade de cette ici pour CARICOM, El Major Isaac, et le ministre des Affaires des étrangères de cette ici, Honorable Sylvain Flood Bobre. Le ministre des Affaires des étrangères a déclaré que chaque pays qui m'a CARICOM brise un à l'autre, parce que nous vivons à des la terre qui sept fois plus grand que nous. Alors, ce moment pour lever doit pour CARICOM, qui a fait en tous ces pays, c'est pour signifier la nécessité de coopération tout ensemble pour adresser les conditions qui existent à la terre présentement. Nous faisons une décision ça là, que l'année ça là, nous allons commencer à lever le flag carré comme tout côté ces national flag là hier à de tous ces pays. Et nous ne pouvons juste faire que ces flags là hier en pays, tout au Liban la terre, côté l'année en mission et bien embassy pour ce yon na mam caricom community nou kay ni ce national flag yo et caricom flag aussi so sa se yon bagay nou kay kwe dat ki symbolic mais i pa symbolic to sell si l'on ministre Bobre l'année en pile ki caricom ja accompli depuis tan y an existas nou ni free movement of persons nous avons free movement of labor. Nous avons à présent, nous avons des qui bien sérieux. Les affaires liées et les affaires travel. 
ça c'est un qui est bien bien important et ça c'est yon bagay à Bweza, tout heads of government CARICOM qui a gardé qui manier nous ça address by ça puis est bien important pour moun ka travel up and down et Kautan Jodia gouvernement c'est ici qui a baissé departure tax là pour ces mêmes CARICOM là pour 35 dollars ça c'est yon bagay nous ka fait pour nous assister pour célébration et observance, ça là, les citoyens ont trouvé encouragement pour porter couleur de pour CARICOM. Couleur bleu, ça c'est blé léger, qui signifie ciel. Couleur bleu, qui n'est timide, plus noircé, qui signifie la, la mer. Jaune, qui signifie soleil. Vert, qui signifie végétation. Et des si, qui sont en maille qui déconnachent, qui signifie manière ce pays a qu'a débranché à bas système colonialiste. Division régionale en bureau premier ministre là en collaboration et puis CARICOM établit en cette ici initiative là I am CARICOM ça veut dire moi c'est CARICOM initiative ça là c'est pour porter plus visibilité et la mer comprendre le travail organisation CARICOM en parmi les citoyens caribla et pour ça là chercher pour engager et assister les citoyens pour une prévélation et puis les institutions à faire sécurité des gouvernances web et plan et pour ça participer entièrement en développement et efficacement régional plan pour am caricom sorti à l'union conférence des comités ambassade caricom côté tout d'accord qui c'est faux organisation à bois et peuple régional un plan de développement, c'est pour cela, c'est effort CARICOM pour faire plus facile pour suivre et implémenter le programme pour plus accueillir plus autre comme une CARICOM pour cette année qui va venir. Commémoration journée de CARICOM en cette ici, le 6 juillet, présenter l'occasion pour commencer le programme de communication à un CARICOM. Pour raison de cela, la division régionale la crée plusieurs activités d'éducation pour renforcer sa organisation a déjà accompli et pour aussi présenter le travail qui a continué fait. À parmi ces activités, à ces discussions, à ces divers établissements médias, diverses autres activités pour recevoir des informations à ce contribution, rôle, activité et développement et implémentation plan commun. CARICOM. Ministre des Affaires agricoles et la pêche, c'est aussi honorable Ezekiel Joseph qu'a conseillé l'organisation NFTO pour essayer de couper à ce qui a coûté pour conduire l'opération. Ça, c'est l'opération organisation fixe. Le ministre là, qui a adressé un petit cérémonie des semaines qui passent pour signer un chèque à valeur de 4 millions de dollars pour payer des dettes ou une fresh pour NFTO. Le ministre de l'Agricole a demandé les officiers NFTO pour chercher une façon qui est plus facile pour ça conduire le business fixe là pour porter un premier soulagement et bénéfice pour les femmes et les cultivateurs fixes à cette ci Parce que si vous n'avez pas de chèque fixe ou avant, vous avez des ressources là qui descendent et puis important pour les NFT ou de manière à couper à ce opération de course, pour que les femmes aient plus de l'argent en poche. Donc, le gouvernement, nous à Paris, 1.4 million de dollars, ça nous a payé aujourd'hui pour payer les femmes fixes. Nous avons aussi payé six ports, ça a été post-Covid programme pour les femmes fixes. Nous avons aussi payé pour les femmes fixes. Si nous avons payé pour les femmes fixes aujourd'hui, nous avons aussi payé six ports pour les femmes fixes. Nous avons payé des accès par acte. Et puis, nous avons payé un esprit pour le pour Black Secret Tour. Donc, le ministère, le extension officer, le BPIP, qui a mis le système à la place, et puis le fameux qui a eu un support ça. Et merci, mesdames. À ce côté, nous, votre nouvelle là, je vous remercie au temps pour regarder. Je vous remercie pour l'invitation. Pour que je ne puisse pas encore, c'est bien, conserver la vie. Je vous remercie pour vous encore, encore, nouvelle à quoi vous avez. Ça, c'est le mot vieux pour cette journée. Merci, Apple Primus. And that brings us to the end of NTN Nightly. Join us next time at 7 p.m. with a repeat at 7 a.m. You can also catch up with us anytime on the St. Lucia Government Facebook page or YouTube channel. I am Janelle Norville.